Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Elden Ring. Last time, we had a patch. I knew something was a little bit different. Uh, the NPCs on the map are in fact new. And there were a bunch of balance changes too. They murdered my boy. My poor boy! The machine gun shield. What is the machine gun shield, you ask? Good question. Uh, other things we did last time, we took our first steps into Stormhill, where we fought our way along a very well-fortified road into the castle, where some unfortunate soldiers had their chance and did their dance at the Space Jam. Come on. And now here we are, prepared to enter Stormvale Castle, the first major dungeon. And before we do... In search of the Elden Ring. Emboldened by the flame of ambition. Get the fell omen. We know a little bit about the omen. Oh, we can grab this. Yeah. Oh, that's a satisfying noise, too. So, yes, Margit is a boss that can be parried. But there's a little wrinkle with him. It takes two. Is a wonderful game. Uh, it takes two parries <laughs> in order to get him into that repost state which is a really interesting way of... Are you okay? It's a really interesting way of balancing this mechanic out that's often been kind of troublesome when it comes to boss fights with From. I mean, aside from Sekiro. Most of the time, it's a, it, it's a pretty rare exception when you can parry one of their bosses. And usually when you can, it ends up with a fight that is way too easy, like Gwyn, who I had always taken to be like... Uh, oh, that might be too... Okay, we're good. I had always taken him to be like True King Alon, like this withered husk who wasn't supposed to put up that much resistance. Ah, oh, that was way too early. But no, Gwyn was intended to be much harder than he is. It's just that parrying kind of throws the balance of that fight off if you choose to engage with it. There we are. Yeah, so I really like that they've... What they've done with this. I wish... I wish more bosses were like this. Ah, oh, damn it. I wanted better timing on that. Uh, so the thing about Margit is that he usually goes into this uh, more difficult phase two, where he's finally acknowledging your skill a little bit and taking you somewhat seriously. Uh, he usually phases into this at about like 65, 70% health, somewhere around there. Uh, and the shackle that we bought from Patches can be used to, well, you saw, to uh, stun him for a second, just like Gascoigne's music box. Uh, but, ooh, shit. 
That's not good. Uh, unlike gas coin, that you can only use it twice in the first phase, and you can't use it at all in the second phase. This always leaves him open for a good long attack, good long wind up. I find that one a lot easier to parry than some of his attacks. Uh, like the one that he's probably going to do, yeah, up and then down. When he goes up, it both comes out really quickly, but also I, I can't see his hand that well when he starts that. And that's what I've, I've learned to start doing more, is looking at the hand. Uh, so, that little optimization I was trying to make. Where Margit goes into phase two around, you know, 65, 70% health around there. If I do this right, uh, I'll get him to about 75%, and then use the shackle once, hit him a few times, immediately chain stun him with a second one. Uh, and get even more damage in, hopefully, maybe stagger him. I think now's a good time to start laying in. And uh, we'll phase him into phase two at like 50%. So we have less of the hard part of the fight. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. This is going beautifully. It's like, Oh, we've already heard this. That's like 40, 45%. That's not bad. And this is, those little optimizations are ways uh, that you can make a very difficult fight. Not that this is like an enormously, brutally hard fight. It's just a good, solid first challenge. Uh, you can make fights that you're really struggling with a lot easier on yourself if they have big difficulty spikes later on in the fight. Like, if they have a, a phase transition, a final phase that you struggle with. If you can push them into that phase at a lower threshold, you'll have less of it to deal with. Less time you have to spend in it, less time, or er, less chances that you'll have of making a mistake. That could be fatal. I love when fights push me to do that. Like, it's one of the things I love about Orphan of Cost. It's such a, a damn hard fight that I, I find myself coming up with ways to just grind him into paste in Phase 1 so he has so little health to work with in Phase 2. This is going pretty good, though. Wasn't really expecting it to take more than two shots from Margit, but hey. We got a really nice attempt out of this one. I mean, that's where I always, <laughs> that's where I always curse myself. It's not done yet. We can do a little magic as a treat. Oof. Again, this is why partial parries are beautiful. They, uh, they put their thumb on the scale in your favor a little bit. They skew the risk reward. So it's not quite as, as, uh, dangerous to be doing that. I shall remember thee tarnished, smoldering with thy meager flame. Cower in fear of the night. The hands of the fell omen shall brook thee no quarter. We get a talisman pouch for beating him which means an extra talisman slot. So, cower in fear of the night. It's a fell omen. And knowing what I know now, that actually has a few different meanings that we'll learn more about. Uh, and then all he means by the hands of the fell omen shall brook thee no quarter is that the omen won't show any mercy, the omen and their servants. Uh, for now, I'm going to take a quick break, and I will be right back.
All right, I made myself a nice little cup of tea, figured out where I'm going next, what we're going to be hitting up, and how I'm going to end the episode, but that's for later. For now, we're going to go back into Stormhill, poke around there a little bit more, uh, and meet a couple more NPCs. Uh, the first of whom is actually not that far off from... Roderica. Oh, almost forgot her name. Ro from the shack where we met Roderica. No, we are not getting dismounted by you. You need to watch those. those. <laughs> I mean, it's essentially a horse killer. <laughs> or is that only is that only something that that claymores were called? Horse killers, Jesus! Not seen you before. Name's Bernard. Tarnished, just like you. Let me ask you something. Are you here in the lands between to take up the fight? Does your faith in the guidance of grace hold firm, despite the collapse of the Golden Order? Oh. Do we have firm conviction, or does our faith waver? Honest to a fault, I see. Such thoughts won't behoove you as a tarnished, but there's nothing wrong with that. Any interest in bearing the torch of my battle arts? All I know is the sword. Picked up a fair few tricks in my time, too. Now's the time to pass them on to a good tarnished like you. There's a myriad of battle arts in these lands that I've yet to discover. Mementos of all the warriors who raised their arms in battle, lost and died. A fine tale, all told of true chivalric romance. That's how I fell in love with the sword and the arts of combat. It grants meaning even to falling in battle, to death itself. So Bernal is here to offer us a bunch of new Ashes of War. However, a bunch of these, like you can see Parry there, Spinning Slash was already on our, our insect blade. Not floating your boat, eh? <laughs> well, there's no rush. Knowledge of the arts can wait another day. Something about the way he says, not floating your boat, eh? <laughs> Just really tickles me. Uh, many of the Ashes of War he sells are already available on weapons. So as long as you picked up the... Uh, the, the Wayfront Ruin, uh, no, it's the Gatefront Ruins, um, Whetstone, you can just pluck those right off. Same with, like, Quick Step, if you ever pick up a dagger, you can just grab it off of that. Uh, so, on our way through, we are evidently going to be raiding this camp. That is a big-ass dog! That's a thick dog, too! Rumsoft is getting more dog variety. Mastiff. Actually looks like a giant Scotty. We can mess up. No, we can't. That apparently, I have, I have no poise for that spell. So, uh, we're not gonna let the dog kill us. Is what's actually gonna happen. Sir! 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 Spicy dog, huh? I mean, there is one dog spicier in the game, but still. I hope that... Ah, oh, that didn't get patched, right? They didn't kill spicy dog, did they? That would be terrible. Oh, speaking of that patch, there were multiple quest lines that just weren't finished. But they can, ba they can now be completed. Kenneth's was, in fact, one of them. Oh, yeah, one of you. Oh, the dogs. Let me get this backstab, though. What? No, why? 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 Oh! This is... Nope. 
You get some iframes when you summon the horse, but not that many. <laughs> and not at that particular moment. Ah! Oh. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back at that stake, America. So, let's talk a little bit more about Margit and his design. Because that was a... I, I didn't really comment on it, but it's a really wild design. It's... He is... At his base, humanoid, but gigantic. And then there are all the, the thick, gnarled-looking horns that are, are growing wildly out of one side of his face, completely, almost completely covering that side. Um, he's got that tattered, ratty cloak that's just cinched at the collar with this thick cord of rope. And not even anything under it. Uh, along with that gnarled-looking walking stick. And yet, he is this, this proud, uh, confident, noble warrior archetype. Let's do this the right way. We have to call on our friend Orica, who is doing a great job. Uh, Orica, if you remember from the Ash of War, will spew poison. She's actually thought to be a, a pretty good summon. So yeah, she is doing her best. Oh, that's beautiful. Not the rock spell that I wanted. It's making me realize I'm going to have to go back to Kaelid eventually uh, to get the one that I, I missed when I picked up the meteorite staff. Different rock spell. Good. Not going to have trouble with spicy dogs again. We can claim our exalted flesh. Which we're going to want to eat uh, semi-regularly for tough bosses because it's a straight-up damage buff. And one of the things I probably will be using the crafting system for since you can evidently craft that. Oh, hello. Block that with my face. That's okay. So... Remember what Margit's shackle actually is, what it told us? The omen are a class or a designation of people who were who were reviled, much like the tarnished are. And those shackles were made to keep them confined. Especially Margit. There was a great emphasis put on on imprisoning him specifically. And so it begs the question, why does he hate us? Why does he choose to fight us? What reason does he, this proud warrior, have upon being granted some modicum of freedom? Why does he side with Godric, of all people, with the Golden Order? It would seem. So while we chew on that, we're just going to casually bypass the fire slugs hanging around. Uh, make our way over to this Colosseum area and get forcefully dismounted because... Get forcefully dismounted because... There we are! Right on time. Invaded by recusant Henricus. Big ol' mace. Main thing to note about him is just his title. Recusant Henricus. Oop! Hello. Jumped into that. I think he was trying to welcome us to the jam. 
Oh, no, 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 no. That's our job. That is our job. The second will hit him. Yeah. So he will drop a unique talisman, and I don't think he shows up if you've cleared all the bosses in the area. So we're getting him out of the way now, and he introduces us to competitive multiplayer, along with the bloody finger that we just picked up. Enhances stamina draining attacks. Hammers are highly effective against shield-bearing foes, so much so that they are known as night killers. All I wanted was to fight, to fight as a warrior to the last. So why, why, O oh guidance of grace, will this door not open? Ah, uh, he internalized the one more door thought, huh? In his thought cabinet. Yeah, that'll really drive. That'll really drive a ghost mad. Anyway, R.I.P. To oh wait! Wow, that's actually more appropriate than I thought. I forgot I'm technically Harry. The other, I guess the other interesting feature of that invader was the chess piece that he wore. It has a huge eye symbol on it. And we know someone with an eye motif already. We will eventually get that armor set too. It's just, it's going to be a little while before we see that again. Uh, so in the meantime... That should avoid the fall damage. Okay, we're good. Right, so we'll just drop down here and I think a bit more. We're going to make a slight detour in a second. Yeah, not mess with the demi-humans. We're going to come around uh, to the right-hand side where there is a field full of shattered giants as well as one or two who have just been lying dormant. And we're going to skirt around them just for the time being. Uh, we are on our way to meet someone who I am pretty sure you're all going to fall in love with. And in the meantime, we can also grab that Lance Talisman, something that... Ooh, he's going to reach me from there. Yeah. They have longer reach than you think. Uh, the Lance Talisman increases the damage you do with attacks from horseback really come in handy for some upcoming fights that I want to do uh, from a top torrent. And then from there, we can actually go and meet this NPC that y'all are going to love. Let's see. So, Margit, huh? From really is not fucked around with their first bosses uh, in a hot minute. Not counting the tutorial ones, like uh, the Godric Soldier, I guess, or the Asylum Demon, or even the Grafted Scion, uh, and... Oh, he's here already! Who's Anybody meant to kill you? Help me! I'm stuck! Hello? Hello? Anyone? Oh, my stars! I'm so happy to see you. I am Alexander, also known as the Iron Fist. And as you can see, I'm stuck here. Please. Can you help me out of this? Oh, absolutely. My thanks. A thousand thanks. Just give me a good smack from the rear with something nice and big. And I'll pop clean out, I'm sure. Don't dally. Uh, there's no need to fret. I'm very well trained. Give it your all, I say. So that's Come interesting. On. Give me a good s I'll pop clean out. He's stuck and needs us to hit him. Hit him hard enough to get him out of there. So we need to do a charged attack. Oh, that wasn't enough. Maybe another one. <laughs> so Alexander's kind of our onion bro of the game. Love him. Love Alexander, the living jar. Let's get a nice look at him. Ah. <sighs> Well played, good sir. Well played. Oh, that mighty wallop of yours 
almost spelt the end of me. <laughs> ah. Well, I'm out now, and that's what counts. I thank you. And as a token of my appreciation, I'd like you to have this. Oh, me from his pocket. Lovely. More exalted flesh, though. A lump of animal flesh. Oh, good. It's not his. Pickled in a medicinal solution mixed with fiery spices. Oh, that sounds tasty. Temporarily boosts physical attack. Consider a delicacy in the Badlands. Thus, uh, this invigorating repast was reserved exclusively for heroes. Once again, pleasure is mine. I am the warrior jar known as Alexander. Iron Fist Alexander, in fact. I journey to the east, where I intend to further my education in the ways of war. And beyond these lands lie the scarlet, rot blighted Kaelid wilds. I'm familiar. On their southern edge is Redmayne Castle, in which a festival of combat is being held. I'd heard whispers of such festivities before. Doesn't the notion set your breast of butter? <laughs> yeah, we love Alexander. I'm heading eastward to Redmayne Castle on the southern end. I've heard there's... Right, so when we inevitably find ourselves back in Kaelid, we'll meet back up with Alexander at this festival. Talisman depicting a lance and a knight. Knights on horseback are deadly foes. They all, uh, they see all below from their lofty position. Meeting little meaningful resistance. Ah, hello, Mosquito. Are you meaningful resistance? No. <laughs> oh, great dragonfly head. Okay. Thank you very much. And some land octopi out yonder. Uh, but we do not need to get involved with that. We are out of here. We're in fact gonna be jumping down from where we just knocked Alexander out of his depression in the ground. Uh, and find ourselves another site of grace, this time by, oh, we've seen these before, these pumpkin heads. That one is not doing a whole lot of anything. It's just the worst hybrid build. Respecking cannot come soon enough. <laughs> this one is behaving erratically. Whereas the other one strolled out of the castle and immediately beeline to attack us. Oh, that's too much damage. I thought I would be a little hardier. Something drove this thing utterly mad. But all it drops is a sanctuary stone again. I wonder what that's about. I genuinely do. I, I haven't made that connection myself yet, so. That's not me being coy and, and teasing something for later. <laughs> it's just... There's got to be something to that, I, I feel. Found my hunting lark. Oh, it wasn't a mosquito. It was a dragonfly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it dropped its great dragonfly head. I just didn't <laughs> acknowledge it. I think I called it a mosquito before. A rare piece of stone fragment found near places where ruins have Fallen from the sky. Material used for crafting items. It feeds and strengthens the light as it shines. Okay. So that's something to go on. The ruins have fallen from the sky. Terribly sorry. Uh, are you here as a customer? Once again. 
flame chariots. Yeah, we'll get the note. I want to actually double back for some of those too. <laughs> no reason not to max these out, especially now that they're so much cheaper. Oh, I'm, I'm afraid I've very little to offer. You can get some very, very handy advice from those notes. Oh, is there anything wrong? I'm afraid of very little. No, you've offered me so much, sir. Let's grab the Ah, oh, yes! Now we can power stance. There are no that I know of, no stat requirements like there were like there were for power stancing Dark Souls 2. Ah, this looks half decent. Oh, lovely. See that move set? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I'm heavy rolling. So, we're going to modify this just a bit. This looks okay. I look a bit like a farmer who has been called off to war. Oh, plus we got all those smithing stones, too. And just a little ways down the road, we'll have our next objective. Or at least the next one I've set for us. Uh, it's a little town called Summon Water Village. Where something quite cool waits. Uh, also, there should be... Just like Alexander, yet another NPC around. Although, he is supposed to be around here-ish. And I think I may have already made him move on. Because we have, in fact, talked to him in Roundtable Hold. Uh, that would be D Hunter of the Dead. I guess if you get here before uh, Melina has, has sent you off to Roundtable Hold... Uh, you'll find him around here. Well, I did my due diligence and looked around for D Hunter of the Dead. Uh, all around the outskirts of Summon Water Village and along that bridge uh, between the site of Grace and Alexander. No such luck. Then you met Blythe, did you? Wonderful. I'm glad I pointed you in his direction. He's boorish, blunt, and couldn't find his nose with both hands. But he's a good egg. <sighs> I think the two of you are sure to find the best in one another. He is a good egg. Uh, so we just came back here for a second. So I could not have enough runes to put some of those smithing stones to use. But now I do. Very good, very good. Can we get either of them to plus three? No, not quite. We can do plus two, plus one. Uh, and now we're going to go right back to where we were. Uh, we're not ignoring summon water or saving it for later. Ah, there he is. The Doot Doot Boatman! So the Doot Doot Boatman uh, will teleport around one of, I think it's about three locations here. Put enough distance between you and him, and then he'll use that distance to summon a bunch of skeletons. This is not a big deal, because he is like Nito in that he will kill his... <laughs> spicy, spicy, spicy. Uh, he will kill his own spell, his own skeletons with his AoE attacks. So we're gonna ignore as many of them as makes sense. And the reason I love the Doo-Doo Boatman uh, is because he's just such a unique type of boss. 
with a unique move set. Not many bosses fighting you from from a boat, doing boat maneuvers at you. When he does this, we'll back away. Unfortunately, none of his skeletons are super close. They still got got by him though. Uh, can we get these before? Oh, barely too soon or too late. Okay, and the Tibia Mariner has relocated. Gonna find a new neighborhood to gentrify. And once more. Oh! He'll take care of this for us. You just have to treat him a little bit like Rom's spiderlings. Run in, get your hits in, get back a little. Oh, good. We took care of one of the respawning skeletons. I love that they added that, that there are now uh, ways beyond itemizing for it in order to deal with respawning immortal skeletons. Oops. It should just be a standard AoE. Big ol' explosion. Okay. And you should be relocating for the last time. The skeletons will start to pile, uh, pile up and follow you, but they don't cover ground that quickly, and once they do catch up, they're still liable to get friendly fired upon. We will clean up just a little bit, especially now that he's helped us out with that. I don't know if I'm going to get this one. Oh, no, I'm good. The other one doesn't matter. I want him to do that, that boat drift move. <laughs> he's a pushover, but he's a cool pushover. We love the Tibia Mariner. One of my favorite minor boss fights of the game, <laughs> for sure. Oops. Well, he doesn't have too much left in him. So, welcome to the jam. Not floating your boat, eh? Beating him, we get a key item called Death Root and new, uh, not Ashes of War, Spirit Ashes. And that Death Root is something that we'll find a use for almost immediately. So I'll go here real quick. Oh, mushrooms, lovely. Praise the mushroom. exit Summon Water Village as soon as I can open the map up. You are not able to open the map while you're in combat or while something is in combat with you. And it can actually be quite annoying sometimes, especially if something is aggroed far away and gotten stuck and refuses to leash. Oh, there we are. So now we want to take that death route that we just got back to Round Table Hold. And as you can imagine, because D was supposed to be skulking around there, uh, we we're going to be talking to D about this. He would have actually been the one to tell us, hey, be careful of this Tibia Mariner character. The be A source that gives rise to those who live in death. The beast clergyman found a bestial sanctum in the distant east collects and devours these roots. On the night of the dire plot, the stolen rune of death enabled the first death of a demigod. Later, the rune of death spread across the lands between through the underground roots of the great tree, sprouting in the forms of death root. And is there anything interesting on our new talisman pouch? As the voice of the two fingers, finger readers are said to live lives eternal. 
and one is even supposed to have served as a wet nurse to royalty. Interesting, and that's what Margaret had on him. Those who live in death should be left well alone. All the more should you spy a mariner among their number. Well, well. Another fool who won't listen to reason, eh? But with a prowess for weeding death root. Hmm. How would you like to earn the strength of beasts? If you're inclined to haunt more of those who live in death and weed their death root, then I'll introduce you to Garank, the beast clergyman. I have a matter of my own to attend to, and the beast himself wishes for someone to take my place. What say you? Very well. Show me your map. I've marked the location for you, of a hidden gateway. It will lead you to Garank, the beast clergyman. What is it? Still milling about? The map indicates where the gate will lead you to Garank, the beast. Okay. So we're now... F Be sure to tell me if you meet a young woman named Lanya. She's a servant to my house. She's been my companion since childhood. I've lost count of the number of times I've... Honestly. Alright, so we are now on D's quest. And this red mark that he's put on, uh, put on our map is actually very close to the Third Church of America, which the, the, the site of grace for which we've luckily already discovered. So those who live in death, full proper now, and they're related to the Knight of the Black Knives, the, assass the assassination plot against uh, the demigod Godfrey the Golden, the first demigod to die. Something called the Rune of Death was what enabled the murder of an otherwise immortal being. And mortality as it exists in Elden Ring is quite interesting. And of course, it loops back to the Urge Ring. Like, remember all the returning to the roots business? The Erdtree burial watchdog? And all the corpses tangled in the roots down in that catacomb? We've got some cool stuff to explore. Uh, but first, again, gotta get down here and look around. I just want to make this fall without dying. <laughs> there we go. Concealed behind some brush. Now, where does that take us? Gray Roll's Dragon Barrow. And where did that bring me? right back to Kaelid. So moving on from that, let's actually take a look in the Bestial Sanctum. What a metal place. Looks to be the beast clergyman. No hidden path. Time for brief respite.
hard to get a good look at him. I smell it. 